I might have to start this over again. Did it work? I wonder how long you guys have been staring at me trying to figure this out. Okay, now I think it's working now. <laughs> Sorry about that. Hi, I don't know if you got the introduction. I'm Sarah here with the Hannesburg Public Library for the summer reading program, and today we are gonna be reading The Princess and the Wizard. Also, stay tuned, we're gonna make ourselves our own bubble solution so we can make bubbles, because that will be what will be provided for you today in the goody craft bags that I have for you. So if you come on and stop by, I still have some from last week and I definitely have some more from yesterday or the day before yesterday and today. Anyways, let's get started. I'm going to ignore my computer screen, what it's telling me, but I'm going to keep going. And if it's all screwy, I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> all right. I would like to see the video so I know what you're looking at. Cause it's kind of hard to tell. Hold on. What's that do? Hmm. Choose how you want to say. You know what? I'm just gonna start reading, and I hope you guys can see this. You check after. I can see my face. All right, the princess and the wizard. It was Princess Eliza's birthday. She was just blowing out the seven candles on her cake when a wicked wizard flew down the chimney and into the room. Why didn't you invite me to your party, he thundered. <clears throat> because wicked witchers like turning people to stone, replied Princess Eliza. So they do, said the wizard, and with the flick of his bony finger, he turned the king and the queen and all the party guests into stone. And then he laughed a horrible laugh and said to the Princess Eliza, They like capturing princesses too. Just then, there was a whirring of wings, and in through the window flew Princess's fairy godmother. She was late for the party. When she saw what had happened, she waved her wand and said, The princess may try seven tr times to escape by changing her color and changing her shape. The wizard just laughed his horrible laugh and said, Changing her color and changing her shape will never help Princess Eliza escape. Then he snapped his bony fingers again and turned the fairy godmother into stone. Uh-oh. The wizard whisked the princess up the chimney and carried her away in his doll t tall, dark castle. He locked her into the cellar, where she cried herself to sleep. The next day was Monday. The wizard unlocked the cellar door. He was holding the big red book, which contained his magic. This is your first chance to sleep, he said. I shall count to one hundred, and I shall come and find you. He opened his book, he closed his eyes, and began to count. I hope you guys can see this. Oh, boy. Oh, I did this over. Princess Eliza ran outside. The moat of the castle shone blue under the blue sky. She jumped into the water and turned herself into a blue fish. Ninety-eight, ninety-nine, a hundred. The wizard opened his eyes, looked in his magic book to read, to find where Eliza is hiding from you. Look in the moat for the fish that is blue. He fished Eliza out of the moat and took her, took her to his kitchen, which was full of blue plates and pots and pans. They were all covered in dried up food. So you like blue, do you? He said. And then set to work and wash, and he locked her in. 
On Tuesday morning, the wizard unlocked the kitchen door. He looked at the clean plates and pots and pans, and he grunted. Chance number two, he said. Then he opened his book and closed his eyes and began to count. Princess Eliza ran into the farmyard, and she turned herself into a yellow chick and hid in some straw. But the wizard read his book. The straw in the farmyard is yellow and thick. Princess Eliza is disguised as a chick. He scoped Eliza up and took her to a cupboard, which was full of yellow socks that were had all had holes in them made by pointy toenails. Ooh. So you like yellow, do you, he said, then set to work, and darn, and he locked her in. On Wednesday morning, the wizard unlocked the cupboard door, looked at the darn socks, and grunted. Chance number three, he said. He opened his book and closed his eyes and began to count. Princess Eliza ran to the meadow. She changed herself into a green grasshopper and hid among the grass blades. But the wizard read in his book, the grasshopper princess is easily seen, chirping away in the meadow so green. He caught Eliza in a net and took her in his green bathroom. The bath basin walls and the floor were covered with wizard slimy toothpaste. Ew. So you like green, do you, he said, and set to work and wipe, and he locked her in. He's not very nice. The three more days went by. Each day the princess tried to escape. On Thursday she turned herself into an orange fox and hid in a pile of orange leaves. On Friday she turned herself into a purple butterfly and fluttered among the purple flowers. On Saturday, Saturday she turned herself into a black cat and lurked in the black tunnel. But each time the wizard found her and gave her yet more work to do. He's cheating. He's not even playing hide and seek, right? On Sunday morning, the wizard came on the roof where Eliza had been scrub scrubbing the, scooty the sooty chimney pots. Instead of grunting, he laughed his horrible laugh. This is your last chance, he said. If I catch you this time... You must stay and work for me for the rest of your life. Then he opened his book and he closed his eyes and he began to count. Is it? I hope it's working, you guys. Okay, anyways. Princess Eliza turned herself into a white gull and flew up into a cloud. But as she hov hovered above the roof where the wizard was still counting, she saw the words forming on the page of his open book. So that's how you, he finds me, she cried. I shall never escape. And that she had an idea, she turned herself into a page of the wizard's book. A perfectly blank white page with no writing on it. 98, 99, 100. The wizard finished counting and began to read his book. The princess turned into a bird in the sky. She hid in a cloud and had one more try. That was the end of the page, and the wizard turned over to read more. But there was no more. The next page in his book was blank and white. He flew into a rage. Uh oh, I can't see it. You silly book, he shouted. He hurled it to the moat. The book landed with a splash and sank to the bottom. All the wizard's magic was gone. At that moment in the palace, the king and the queen, all of the party guests came back to life. Where is Princess Eliza? They asked each other. Nobody knew except the fairy godmother, and she only smiled and said nothing. Princess Eliza had turned herself from a white page into a blue fish, was swimming at the end of the moat. She turned herself into a yellow chick and ran across the corn in the farmyard. She turned herself into a green grasshopper and hopped over the grass. She turned herself into an orange fox and raced through the orange leaves. She turned herself into a purple butterfly and fluttered over the purple flowers. She turned herself into a black cat and streaked through the black tunnel. And then she turned herself into a bird, a white bird, and flew all the way back 
to the palace and in through the window. She perched on a chair and at the tea table and changed herself. Back into a princess. The king and the queen and all the party guests hugged her. Then Princess Eliza cut her birthday cake and everyone had a slice. The end. That was also written by Julia Donaldson and illustrated by Lydia Monks. I forgot to say that in the beginning. This is a really cute book. I like the the textures on it. All right, I'm going to get up now. I am going to switch over there. Give me one second. Ouch. I have this silly flowy dress on. It's not working out for me. And if you are on, could you write down in the comments to see if I am working or if I have been doing something wrong this whole time? That's my little setup. That's how I usually make all the videos, is sitting down and comfortable. I wanted to go outside, but the cats were a little bit much. So, anyways, I'm going to move a bunch of stuff. We are going to be making bubbles. The first thing I'm going to need to do is you're going to have to get a large cup. That's my large cup for now. We are going to pour a half a cup of dish soap into the cup. So I think a half a cup is, I'd say right about there. Almost. Big making the soap now. I am live. Could you check for me, though? Because it's like a black screen on my thing, and I've been talking for the last 10 minutes. <laughs> and then, after that... Let me see. Or I might have to do this all over again. Oh, boy. Anyways, after you get your dish soap in there, you're going to take a cup and a half of water... Okay, can you see my face? I can. Okay, then we're good. Uh -huh. And then after you that. Okay, cool beans, thank you. <laughs> then you're going to get sugar. And you're going to get how many? Two teaspoons. Good. I can't, guys. I can't see what I'm doing. I feel like I'm blind. Whoops. That was up a lot more. Alright. So now, I'm gonna mix this up a little. I think that might do the trick. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pour a little bit in here. And then I'm gonna test it. I'm gonna go get myself a pipe cleaner. Hold on one second.
So you guys are each provided with a little pipe cleaner and what you're gonna do is you're gonna make a circle and just twist it down all the way. And dig it like this. And let's see if I can give myself a bubble. Got it though, okay. Oh, that was cool, and I just got it all over me. Anyways, that's how you make your bubbles solution. You guys should do this today. Very simple. I have pipe cleaners for you guys in your craft bags. Also, stay tuned at 10 o'clock. We'll be doing a little bit something for the learning garden. I hope you guys enjoy this. Sorry if I confused anybody and I couldn't really see what I was doing. But yeah, I hope you have a great day and I'll see you at 10 o'clock.